Hello and welcome to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, proudly presented by Sloan. With the first week of the season in the books, it's safe to expect that most of the rust has been shaken off and that, much like the spring weather, these boys will keep heating up. Grateful to have a 65 degree night with that right now. With new faces making themselves known early. His first at Wrigley as a Cub. And old dogs proving they can still learn new tricks. What a night for the veteran catcher. This is quickly becoming one of the most fun teams in baseball to watch. We got a lot of new guys over here, but uh, we're all blending together really well and we're having a really fun time. The fans got a great show from the Cubs this week. Boy, this is some game, isn't it? You just never know what you're going to see in a big league ball game. So we'll make sure to hold up our end of the bargain, too, as we walk you through the best of the best from the Cubs this week. The Cubs had been unable to crack Mariners ace Luis Castillo through three innings. But Cody Bellinger had something to say about that in the fourth. And a ground ball bangs off the tarp. Half is in to score, belly to second. RBI double and we're starting over. It's 1-1. He just kept it fair inside the base and past France. Uh, that was a battle for Bellinger. He fought off a couple of high fastballs, one changeup, then he got another changeup and delivers his double down the first baseline. Great at bat, Cody Bellinger. The Cubs were already in double digits in the sixth inning on Tuesday. But when Nico Horner got a high fastball on 0 and 2, he couldn't help tacking on a few more runs. Horner down the line. That's going to score two. Nico into second. It's a two run double, and it's 13 8. And when we talk about his ability to hit all kinds of pitches, we see it time and time again. This one's on pit high. Horner in the corner for two bags and two more runs. And Nick Madrigal kicked the extra point to make it a 14-point night for the Cubbies. Corner around third. Rodriguez throw. Cut off. Nick Madrigal. RBI single. It's 14-8. Jamison Tyone is still getting used to donning Cubby blue. But doesn't he look great? Tyone made his second start of the week as he took on the Dodgers late Saturday night. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And he gets J.D. Martinez. That was in there. Got him looking. Here comes the 2-2 to Mookie Betts. Strike three call. Mookie knew it. Despite the Dodgers' reputation for offensive prowess, Tyone had no trouble. And a swing and a miss, and he just blew him away. Martinez has gone for the second time. That's five strikeouts for Jamison Tyone. And a swing and a miss, and he strikes him out. Jamison Tyone. Punches out Marcus Lynn Betts, and it stays 1-0. On Sunday, when Tyone was looking to get out of the fourth inning, Hap made sure to lock things down and left. Back is Hap near the wall, makes a leaping catch. Right in front of the brick wall. Going back, Hap at the wall, leaps and makes the catch just in front of the wall. Out number three. The Rangers leave the man at second. Mariners reliever Paul Seawald has been one of the tougher bullpen arms over the last two years. But with the Cubs needing a spark in the ninth on Wednesday, Cody Bellinger showed him who's boss. That one is gone. The belly bomb, his first at Wrigley as a Cub. Cubs get a run back, it's 5-2. The wind is blowing out substantially to straightaway center. And as we said last night, you never know. This ball well struck. Little cutter right in the middle of the plate. Bellinger didn't miss it. We're a long way from November, but with some of these Cubs, it's Veterans Day every day. How about that? Jan Gomes leaves the lot, and the Cubs now lead it 3-1. We've got the Golden Oldies coming up next on Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. When the Cubs picked up two-time Gold Glove winner Tucker Barnhart, they knew he came with a cannon. And when Julio Rodriguez tried to swipe a base off him, he teamed up with Nico Horner to execute a perfect toss and tag. There he goes. Oh, out 
22nd. Junior Valentine on the call. He gets blocked off the base a little bit, and boy, Junior might be right. As his left hand gets blocked by Nico's leg, does the right hand get the back corner before the tag is applied? That would be the question. I don't think there's enough there to overturn. I think he's going to be out. The call on the field is confirmed. The runner is out. Seattle loses their count. So Rodriguez is thrown out. Good work by Barnhart and Horner. When facing a hitter with high exit velo like Jared Kelnick, it's important to stay alert because the ball just might wind up in your hand faster than it left it. Leiter makes the catch. Did you do that the other day? I think so. He's had a couple of them already. Back at you. Maybe. I mean, this is a blast. And he just snares it with the glove. We'll have a face off on the right side. Can, can, can a bullpen guy win a gold glove? The answer to that question is no. I mean, he can, but it never happens. A gold glove for Leiter Jr. may be unlikely, but there's a first time for everything, right? Another season, another new slate of seventh inning stretch guests. Cliff Floyd and Cole Wright, take it away. Wrigley Field, happy Easter. How you feeling? You ready? Sounds Let's good. go. A one, a two, a three. Take me out to the ball game. For it's one, two, three strikes to out at the old ball game. Hey, let's get some runs. Some runs. April 15th marks Jackie Robinson Day all across Major League Baseball. And as is tradition, players from the Dodgers and Cubs sported Jackie's signature number to honor one of the great trailblazers of the game. Dodgers manager Dave Roberts That's and David Ross got both of their squads together out by the statue, had a moment. Jason Hayward spoke and shared a message. It was really special and all throughout the broadcast today, we will be celebrating Jackie Robinson's legacy and why it is so important to our game here today. And while Patrick Wisdom can't break barriers like Jackie Robinson, he did break this scoreless tie. And a watch it go. Patrick Wisdom, another home run, his fifth, and it's given the Cubs a 1 0 lead, a laser to center field. The Cubs picked up veteran slugger Edwin Rios this offseason, hoping he could provide a little thump off the bench. On Sunday, he did just that. Deep center field, back goes Thompson. This ball's got a chance, gone! Two-run homer, Edwin Rios. Cubs are back in the game. It's 4-2, to two. his first home run in a Cub uniform. And he got all of that one. That is his first hit in a Cub uniform. And that's what he brings to the table. He does swing and miss a lot, but when he hits it, he's capable of hitting it in the long way. Catcher Jan Gomes isn't known for his speed, but with slow delivering pitching on the mound on Friday, even he could steal a bag. Goes a runner, payoff pitch, swing and a miss, throw down to second, and it's safe at second is Jan Gomes. How do you like that? Jan Gomes, by the way, now in his career, a perfect eight for eight. He got an outstanding jump right there. This was able to beat the throw from ball. Hope he didn't get up after the bottom of the fourth inning because Gomes was swinging first pitch against Noah Syndergaard in the top of the fifth. Hit the air left field. Jan Gomes gets a hold of one. That one back and that one is gone. How about that? Jan Gomes leaves the lot and the Cubs now lead it 3-1. They've chilled down there at third base and laughing at the Gomer talking about I'm hot. Jan knows he's hot right now. And when you know you're hot, what do you do? Keep swinging, of course. That's hammered left field. That one way back, and that is gone. Jan Gomes has done it again. What a night for the veteran catcher. A two-homer game, and it is 7-2. I think I have to start with the stolen bases. A perfect eight for eight in your career. What's the key for that? Really? The key is don't do it very often and just sneak in one when you can. You got a great group in there that everybody wants to do something for. So um, whenever your time comes and you have a game like this today, you know, you, you enjoy it. And um, it's always a team win, though. It may be a team win, 
But Jan Gomes did become the first catcher since 1906 to record a stolen base and two home runs in the same game. That's okay to brag about. We're barely halfway through, so don't go anywhere. The city, the fan base has meant so much to me throughout my career. Ian Happ's big news and more are waiting for you when we return to Let's Play 2, proudly presented by Sloan. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. It's all happening, when it comes to contract extensions, that is. On Wednesday, Ian Happ and the Cubs agreed to a three-year, $61 million contract extension that will keep Happ in a Cubs uniform through 2026. Yeah, I'm just super excited to be here. Um, you know, this is a place that I've called home since 2015. The city, the fan base has meant so much to me um, throughout my career, and the fact that I get to continue to be here, continue to be a Cub and represent the organization means the world to me. It's a place I've always wanted to be. You know, that has been pretty clear about that for a long time. I've wanted to wear this uniform for as long as I possibly can. Uh, made it pretty easy. Really good person, uh, really good teammate. Um, I've seen such a change in him um, in the last like year, year and a half in terms of like stepping into a leadership role. You know, he became one of the more veteran guys here and really embraced that. They're going to have a great influence on him that comes the next group as well. You know, I really, really wanted to continue to wear this uniform. I really wanted to play with this group of guys, the city and the fan base, like what it means. That is the reason why I was willing to discuss a three-year term because if that was what was going to get it done, you know, that meant a lot to me. So if you don't own a half jersey already, now is the perfect time to get one. Marcus Stroman is off to a roaring start in 2023, and he showed no signs of slowing down against the Mariners on Wednesday. Swing and a miss, strike three. Stroman gets the strikeout. He may have allowed his first runs of the season, but we can't expect him to be perfect. Kelnick takes strike three call. Kelnick thought it was low. And he has a word or two with the home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez. He limited the damage when he needed to and struck out eight over six strong frames. Swing and a miss, speaking of punch outs. Stroman chalks one up. Fifth punch out now for Stroh, and that's another good pitch, right? And you know, at the end of the day, he's gotten a lot of ground balls, routine outs. Makes sense that the Cubs' number one starter would have an ERA of exactly one. Way to go, Stroh. Cody Bellinger made a lot of memories in the first six years of his career with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Rookie of the Year, MVP, and World Series champ. So when he returned to LA for the first time on Friday, it was a special night. Really amazing memories here. And uh, just entering, just seeing the, the uh, stadium being out there again, just kind of really brings it all back. And, um, you know, I'm excited to see all the guys again that I've talked to here and there, but seeing them face to face and kind of talk smack a little bit. And, um, you know, excited to see the fans. Excited to see the fans. And the fans were excited to see him, giving him a standing ovation before the game. A huge throng of media around him, and obviously the fans will greet him nicely, but a guy that accomplished a lot during his time here in LA. It's really a big deal, isn't it? Now that's got to feel good into the right field corner. Bellinger around first. Cody's into second. Back here at Dodger Stadium, and he's got a two-bagger. Not only did he do a lot of great things, but they were in the playoffs every single year that he was in that Dodger uniform. And on Saturday, Cody put on a show that was reminiscent of Hollywood Knights past. In the air, center field. Bellinger back, back some more. Near the wall, jumps, and he made the catch. He stole a homer from Hayward. Cody Bellinger, what a play. Whoa, indeed. Cody Bellinger just stole a home run from Jason Hayward. Bellinger has played many games here. He reached up above the barrier and took a home run away from Hayward. Great play. I think the Dodger fans didn't know what to do, whether you cheer or boo Bellinger as he goes up over the wall. We've been toying with the notion that Justin Steele is on his way to becoming an ace. But it's getting to the point that we might just have to come right out and say it. Had a swing and a miss, a slider darting down and in, struck him out. After his third consecutive stellar start to open the season, we can't help but claim the Cubs have pocket aces with Steele and Stroman. 
Strike three called. Steele strikes out J.D. Martinez looking. Two strikeouts in the first. The crafty lefty faced one of the toughest lineups in baseball and didn't balk at the challenge. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Another strikeout for Justin Steele. Seven innings of two-run ball against the powerful Dodgers. Swings and misses. Strike three. Another strikeout for Justin Steele rolling along. Steele's gone at least six innings in each of his starts so far. And his ERA of 1.42? Yeah, that's befitting of an ace. If you weren't up late on Friday night, you might not have caught one of the Cubs' best innings of the year. In the year, drill right field and forget it. Way out into the pavilion. Ian Happ will touch them all. There's some insurance for you. After with a big night, his second of the season, and the Cubs lead it 4 2. Look out. Including Seiya Suzuki's season debut, in which he casually went back to back with Happ. Suzuki, high drive, deep left field, way back there. Welcome back, Seiya. They go back to back and it is 5-2. A towering home run into the seats in left field. All smiles. But don't go running for your coffee now. We've got all the West Coast action you need at a time that works a little better. In the air left field. Chasing back Taylor at the wall. Gone! Always a threat to go deep indeed. Wisdom will touch them all. His fourth of the year. The Cubs have homered three times here in the eighth, and they lead it 6-2. These Cubs must drive stick, because this week they were all about the clutch. Up to the air, and it's caught. Patrick Wisdom. Stick around. We'll have the best of the week when we return to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. Welcome back to Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, presented by Sloan. With the game tied in the 10th inning on Tuesday, David Ross called on Keegan Thompson to deal with the free runner and get the Cubs a chance to walk it off. But after a leadoff walk, he needed a little help from Patrick Wisdom to save the day. It's caught Patrick Wisdom. And Crawford, it, it seems like the bomb would be in his skill set, but he didn't look really comfortable either one of his attempts. And great play by Wisdom. You see, Keegan throws that high fastball, and Crawford bunts at it but pops it up. Wisdom playing in on the grass, comes in, couple steps, lays out, makes a nice catch. And with the bases loaded, Keegan gave France their worst defeat since Waterloo. Tie France, that is. Swing it. Keegan Thompson with the strikeout. Well, you cannot make a better pitch than that. Now it's nothing in two. What pitch is on your mound? Listen to these fans. The crowd has been wonderful tonight. They're all on their feet. The pitch on the way. Bouncing ball toward third. Wisdom has it. Steps on the bag. Inning over. What a job by Keegan Thompson. And after that gutsy performance from Thompson, Nico Horner put the finishing touches on one of the Cubs' best wins of the season so far. Base hit! Nico rocks it out! Cubs win! Hugs! Hugs! 3-2 in 10, your final. Big and Thompson gets out of the mess. Nico delivers. Right man in the right place when you need contact. Walk it off. Who's the Cubs have half as many walk-off wins this year as they had all last season? Sing the song, everybody. Yeah, sing the song. Hey, look at the light show. I like the lights. We got a disco going. Really good big league ball game here tonight, no doubt. The first walk-off yeah. of your career. First one, I've had a couple chances, so it feels amazing. It's the ultimate to do it in front of this crowd. Uh, grateful to have a 65 degree night with that right now, but um, no, what a, just an amazing place, great game. I uh, love where our team's at, and we couldn't ask for anything more. After that, we couldn't ask for anything more either, Nico. Things were not looking bright for the Cubs in the fourth inning of Tuesday's contest against the Mariners. Trailing 7-1 to one already, 
it was going to take something special to get the Cubs back in the game. And who better to kickstart things than former World Series winner Trey Mancini. Center field, that's well struck. Rodriguez back, and it's gone! First homer as a Cub for Trey Mancini. Dead center field. Welcome to Wrigley. And the Cubs back in it. It's 7-3. After the next two Cubs reached, it was another former World Series winner, Eric Hosmer, tasked with extending the inning. Gets through! Here's Bellinger. He scores, and it's now 7-4. Dansby Swanson would cap off the inning by pushing across the eighth run with one of his four hits on the day. Right drive, base hit, center field. Here comes Nico. Swanson, his third hit of the night. It's 9-7 Cubs. Yeah, three for three in the fourth inning. That's pretty darn good. Boy, this is some game, isn't it? You just never know what you're going to see in a big league ball game. That eight-run outburst helped turn the tide of the game on its head and snapped a 79-game losing streak during which the Cubs lost every game they trailed by seven or more runs. Now, you may have noticed something missing that inning, namely half of those eight runs. No place to put Nelson Velasquez. Those all came on one powerful swing from Nelson Velasquez. Here comes the crowd. In the air! Left field! And the Cubs lead! Oh, baby! Nelson Velasquez continues his hot swinging from AAA to the majors. It's eight. Seven Cubs. Just spectacular. Oh, and did we mention Cubs GM Jed Hoyer was in the boot for the whole thing? I'm a plus seven since I got up here. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to find a more perfect time for your first career Grand Slam than that. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching Let's Play 2 on Marquee Sports Network, proudly presented by Sloan. See you in a week.